Hey guys, Jackie from So Bright Creations. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a blanket ladder from a two by six. If you don't have a table saw and you can't rip your board, you could just use two two by fours. I was just trying to, I don't know what I was trying to do. I like the size, I like this size better. It's a little bit skinnier than the two by four. I'm not sure the price difference, I should check. I think it's also cheaper if you do it this way. I paid just under $11 for this two by six and I'll look up the price of a two by four and let you know. I'm gonna use my table saw to rip this board in half. So rip means to go the lengthwise. Um, you're going with the grain. What I need to do is measure. So this board is exactly five and a half inches. So that means halfway would be two and three quarters. So I need to measure from the fence to the blade two and three quarters. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna raise the blade of my table saw. Going up there. I'm gonna check the thickness. So the blade sticks out a little bit. It's just above. I think I'm gonna go a little bit higher. There we go. So we want the blade to stick out just above the board. It's important to note that I'm doing all of this before I plug my saw in. So I need to measure two and three quarters from the edge of the fence, this is the fence, to the middle of the blade. Now this is important, you don't want to measure to the edge of the blade because then the blade width will take up some space and then this board on here will be smaller than this board here. So I am measuring from the edge of the fence to the middle of the blade. And I see exactly two and three quarters. I hope that's what you see too. <laughs> I don't wanna screw this up. So I measured two and three quarters from one side. And then I measured two and three quarters from the other side and it met in the middle down here. That's not right because it's not enough room for the blade. So I clearly didn't measure this right. So it is a little bit less than five and a half. This is getting a little complicated for me, but I just drew a little line on my tape measure and I measured from this side and I measured from that side. And so I have this little gap about that big. That's about the width of my blade, I think. We're gonna try it. I hope my dad's not watching this. Okay, a few things that I did wrong there. First of all, I should have done a dry run and then I would have known that the roller was too high. And because the roller was too high, it wasn't catching my wood and it was too heavy and the wood popped up at the end and I had to let go because I didn't have the strength to keep, to, to carry it on. So I let go, move out of the way and turn it off. But yeah, every, I'm fine, everything's fine. But just saying, I should have taken the time to do those other things first. Okay, this is where we check to see. Two and a half and two lines. And I got two and a half and not two lines. I tell you, this is how wicked I am. Oh, look at that. Huh. Huge gap in here, you guys. Ah. But down here, it's good. I think what I need to do is put them through the table saw again. Okay, much better. I can work with this. I 
went ahead and sanded yesterday. I used 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go over it again um, with 120 grit and then, or 150, I can't remember what it is. And then I'll do it again quickly with 220 grit because it's an indoor like, nice kind of piece of furniture. So I want it to have a really nice smooth finish. I wanted to show you this one little part in the wood. It was just a little piece that was coming up. Old Jackie would have been tempted to just leave it and sand over it and hope that it's fine. But you really should deal with these pieces that come apart like this and just take it off, smooth it over so that it doesn't come apart, you know, years down the road or whatever. So I'm gonna use my knife here. My dad engraved on it and that's my last name. I got this when I was a kid. Um, anyways, it's super handy. These kind of knives can be sharpened. I'm just gonna carve the wood here. I'm just going against this way to break it off. You can see, I'm gonna smooth it out. Already looking better. I'll give it a sand. Okay, they're really, really smooth. I'm gonna use the chop saw to cut a 10 degree angle on the bottom. Like this one, you can tell it's just a slight angle that when you put it up against the wall, it will have a natural um, slope to it. And so it will sit flat on the bottom and then we'll hit the wall. I've moved this to 10 degree, it's 10.1, which doesn't really matter just as long as both sides are the same. This is the wall side and this is the um, side facing out. The nice rounded edge was the edge that came on this two by six. And so we're gonna have this facing out and then the more square edge, I'm gonna put facing the wall. So we're gonna cut it this way. I've lined them up here. I'm just gonna check and see if they're the same. They're the same, okay. Okay, I got my wood dowel here. I've measured it to 14 inches and I'm gonna cut it with the chop saw here. Measure the diameter here and it is one and a quarter. <laughs> I look kind of like a gnome today, don't I? I got a new spade bit. It is one and a quarter inch because my dowel is one and a quarter inch. It's potential for a lot of error. The best way to do this would be a drill press where you just put it down, set the depth the same, doesn't move, clamp your board, all those things. But I don't have that. We're gonna make do with what we got. First thing first, practice. We are gonna practice. Push down. Whoa, she's, she's sharp. It doesn't fit. I'm gonna sand this a little bit. It's a bit bigger. So I'm just moving the drill around gently. Now I'm just going to sand it a bit. I ended up sanding the whole piece of dowel and then I just sanded a little bit extra on the end. I sanded the whole thing because this dowel had been used before. I got it for free from our local Buy Nothing page. Oh! Okay! Look at that! It's a pretty good fit! I want to see how deep this goes. I'm going to mark this. So it's in that deep. I'd like it to go in a little bit deeper if I can. I don't want it to go all the way through. And, oh, I'm further than that. I think I'm actually about as far as I want to go. So I just marked here on, with a Sharpie where I want it to go. I'm going to save you the time. I did all the math for you. So. Started at the top because it's flush and I measured 14 inches and then I just added 11 each time <clears throat> until I got to the last one and I did it on both sides and 
it's gonna be way more accurate this way versus moving the tape measure and stuff. Make sure to just measure it all in one swoop and just add the numbers. It takes a little bit more mental effort, but I know it's a better, it's doing a better job. Now I'm gonna use my square to find the middle of each board. Um, it's one, two and a half inches, so the middle is one and a quarter. Put it right at eight. So I'm measuring to one and a quarter um, because the board's two and a half and they're just all the same. So I've done a little X where I need to put the drill bit and then I know I'm going to put the drill bit. I'm doing this with my left hand, but right in the middle there. Now I'm drilling all my holes with this bay bit and I just keep checking the side, um, the Sharpie mark on the side to make sure that I'm going to the right depth. Well... <laughs> That made a mess. Doing a quick sound in here. I'm gonna use some wood glue, put a bit in there, and I've tested them all to make sure they all fit. Some of them are a bit tight, so I'm gonna use my rubber mallet and give it a nice little pound in. Oh, and put glue in all of them. And then I can put the top on. And we're just gonna hope that I drilled evenly enough. Got the bottom and the bottom. I got the two bottom pieces going the right direction. Are you ready to see it so far? Oh man. I think it looks really good. Seems to sit decent on the ground. Now for the next part finishing it and what I skipped over is the hours of thought I put into what to do with it. I really struggled with making a decision and a big part of my struggle was the fact that the rungs and the side are different types of wood and so they're different shapes. I tossed around the idea of staining it, whitewashing it, painting half of the side white. In the end I do what I always do when I don't know what to do, clear finish. I used a polyurethane. No matter how good of a painter, stainer, whatever you are, always go for another walk around, check for drips, look at different angles, and just see if you've missed anything. So I'm just using this steel wool. Zero, zero, zero. So this is the finest type of steel wool. And what it's doing is it's just smoothing, smoothing it off. And it also will kind of take a little bit of the, the sheen and the gloss off. Um, so yeah, it just makes for a really nice finished product. Papa So Bright taught me this move. <laughs> okay, let's put the blanket ladder up now. To be honest, I wasn't crazy about the two different colors of wood at first, but it's growing on me um, and I'm happy with how it turned out and I do think it looks really nice. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned something or this has helped you, feel free to give it a like, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on the daily at So Bright Creations on Instagram. Thanks friends!